Hello everybody and welcome to this workshop on EndNote Online. I hope you all managed to create your account through Web of Science for EndNote, that you all managed to log into your EndNote account and that you have your worksheet for EndNote Online. If you haven't got your worksheet for EndNote Online, why don't you pause the video and go to the EndNote LibGuide that we have on the website for you. You'll find this under guides and tutorials at the top of every library page. Go into I am a student, go to study skills, and then you'll see the EndNote guide. Go to further help and support and you'll see a box for EndNote training. And then just download the EndNote online worksheet and you can come back and join us at that stage. So I'm going to share my screen with you now and we'll get started on using EndNote. So I'm here on the library homepage and I'm going to start by logging into my EndNote online account. And as I said, first of all, you've got to go to Web of Science. So I've typed in Web of Science in one search and click on go. And then go click on Web of Science. Now I'm, I'm already logged in, but you should see the option to log in or register if you haven't actually created your account. And once you have created your account or logged in, you'll see there's an EndNote at the top of the screen there. So you can just click on EndNote to log into your EndNote account. And there we go. And you'll see at the top of the screen, there are these menu options. My references at the end of this session, you will have your own references in the center there. Collect will allow us to add references to your EndNote library. Organize allows you to manage your library by creating groups and finding duplicates. Format allows you to create bibliographies or to download the site while you write plugin, which you'll need when, when, uh, when you want to add references to a Word document. Also, when you're in My References, you'll see, as I said in the center there, your references. You have a quick search box allowing you to search and see if we have a reference already in your end library. The My References section, all my references will be anything you've ever brought into your EndNote library, but you can subdivide your library up into smaller groups if you want to as well. And you'll see here, I've got a number of groups already set up. And you can, any references that you bring into your EndNote library, you can add to as many groups as you want to. And we'll cover that as we go through the session. So that is the basics of the EndNote interface. So we want to start now by adding references. And the first thing we're going to talk about is manually adding references. So in a few minutes, we'll be showing you how you can add references from a various sources, such as databases on OneSearch. But if you can't find a reference online and you still want to add it to your EndNote, EndNote library, you can do it manually. So if you go to collect, and then directly under, underneath it, you'll see three options, online search, new reference, and import references. So I'm going to go to new reference. And then you get all these fields to fill in, which can be a bit intimidating, but don't worry. There's a note about a third of the way down saying the above fields are where you need to focus most of your time. Before you start typing anything in, you have to tell EndNote what kind of reference you're putting in. And you'll see it says reference type. So go to the drop down menu and put in the most appropriate style. Now, in the worksheet, we've got a book by Roddy Dial, so we select book, and then we start putting in the other information. So we know the author's name is Roddy Dial, but there's a note underneath the box saying the author's name goes in surname, comma, first name. So if I just, in that case, I'm just gonna type Dial, comma, Roddy. And if he had written that book with other people, you just hit return, go on to a new line and put the next author in. If he had written this book with 20 people, you have to put all of the author's names in. The only time this is different is if you're dealing with what is called a corporate author. So if you had a book or an article or report that had University College Dublin as the author, you'd write out in the author field, University College Dublin, and then put a comma at the end of it. And if you 
the comma will make a display correctly in your references. If you fail to put the comma in, it's going to think that Dublin is the surname and it's going to look weird or unusual in your reference list. So make sure you put that comma in. When you're finished, just click outside the box, it will close up again. And if you look at the top of the screen, it says reference is saved. So all the time, EndNote is saving in the background. So if you lose your internet connection or your battery goes, don't worry, you haven't lost any information. You just need to log back into your EndNote online account again and continue from where you finished. So the title of the book is The Snapper. Year of publication is 1990. The place it was published was London. And the publisher is Secker and Walbrook. So once I've got all that information in, I will be able to cite that in a document and have it displayed correctly in my bibliography. There are other fields which, which we haven't used, such as edition, um, but in this case, we have enough information. If we scroll on down, you'll see additional optional fields. So for example, abstract, if there was an article with an abstract, I, I'd put it in, because it's always handy to remind you what the article is about. If you were dealing with a web page, for example, you, can, you need to put in the URL or the web address and you'll see the URL listed there. But you also need to put the access date or the date you viewed it as well. So you need to put all that information in to make it display correctly if you're dealing with a web page. And at the very end, we have our first option to add it to this reference to group. So I click on the little triangle beside groups. You can see all my existing groups, but I want to create a new group. So click on the box beside new group. And then at the top of the screen, you'll have the chance to give it a name. So it's up to you to give it whatever name is meaningful for you. I'm just going to call this trial and then click OK. And then if I scroll all the way back up to the top and look at the left hand side, you'll see there is a group after pairing with trial that has one in it. And on your own computers, because you haven't done your references in, all my references will be gone up to one. And if I want to view that reference in my EndNote library, I can go directly down to trial. And that will list all the references I have in that group. And I can just click on the snapper, the title to open it up. And there it is. So if I noticed that I had made a mistake and I had misspelled the snapper or I got some information wrong, I can just click in the box and make whatever changes I need. And when I'm finished, I just click on return to list. So you can see how easy it is to get references in manually. You will have all the information because you should have the item in front of you. So the second way of getting references in is from an external source. So such as OneSearch. So I'm gonna go back into OneSearch. And here is the box uh, the result where we search for Web of Science. And you'll notice as well as the link for Web of Science, we have loads of references as well. So how do I get my references in? I get my references in by clicking on the little folder icon on the right hand side, which is there beside each reference. It's like a little, it looks like a little folder. So if I click on it, I select the reference, it turns red. And every time I click on a reference, the number beside the large folder at the top goes up by one. So in this case, we've got three references. So if I click on the folder, it'll display all the references that we have. And then I can go to the export to and I select EndNote. Now, as, I, as it says in the worksheet, we're using the Chrome browser here, uh, so that we're all doing it the same way. Other browsers will do the same thing, but it may display differently on the screen. So if I click on EndNote, you see down on the bottom left-hand corner, there is a, a new file after appearing, and this is the EndNote fi fi file 
containing the three references we had selected. So all I have to do now is go back to my EndNote library, go back into collect, and this time I go to import references. So there's three actions I have to take to get those references safely into my EndNote library. And the first thing we have to do is choose the file. So if I click and hold my left mouse button at the link at the very bottom, the file we just saved, and then just drag it and drop it onto choose file, you'll see the file appearing beside the button. The next thing we have to do is select the import option. So different resources have different import options required. So the, and the import option you always pick for one search is ProQuest. Now this is a really, really long list. So I would always hit P on my keyboard and that would bring me down to the start of the P's and I'm looking for ProQuest. So I scroll on down then on Plessy ProQuest. And then I go to the two drop down menu. So you may have groups created already, but when you're bringing references in, you always add them to unfiled. If I click on unfiled and then click on import, you'll see in red, the three references were imported into unfiled. And you can go directly to unfiled by just clicking on the unfiled link in blue. So if I click on that, And the reason why you bring it into unfiled is that EndNote expects you to check that everything is okay. So you can click on the title and it'll open up as we saw in, when we bring the reference in manually, we wanted to check. So all the information is there. So you can check to see that everything is okay. And it's your responsibility to check that everything is okay. Don't assume just because you found a reference in one search or in a database that everything is coming in correctly, you need to check that everything is okay. And once you've finished checking and you're happy that all the details are correct, you can tick the box beside individual references or click the all button and bring all references in one go. And then there's a drop down menu just to the right. It says add to group. We're going to add this to trial. So then if you look at the bottom, you'll see that trial has gone up to include all the references I had in my unfile folder. So ideally, the only time you should have references in your unfile folder is when you're bringing references in and that you're checking that everything is okay. Um, once you've checked, move it into another group. So you should have at least one group created in your EndNote library. So you can see how easy it is to get references in from one search. And in many cases, it's very similar with the databases as well. And if we go back to one search again, and we search for a database, we're gonna to go to one of our largest journal providers, Web of, uh, Science Direct. I'm gonna put Science Direct into the search box, click on search, And there's Science Direct journals at the top. So click on that. And now I'm in Science Direct. And I'm going to do a search for James Joyce in the keyword search box. And then I'm just going to click on the search button and we get some results. So once again, we need to select our references. So tick the references that I'm interested in and then look on the screen for some way of getting your references out. So look for something that says save or export. And here in Science Direct, we have an option for export. So just click on that. And I have four options for getting my references out. If the, the source that you're in does not explicitly say EndNote, look for an option that says RIS. There we go, click on RIS. 
An RIS is a format that EndNote can, can open. And then just go to back to your EndNote library. Go back into collect. Go back into import references. And it's very much the same as we did in OneSearch. So I choose my file. Sorry. So I choose my file by dragging and dropping using the left mouse button. I go to my import option and we're in Science Direct. So quite often it's the name of the resource that we're in. So if we scroll on down and look for Science Direct, there we go. And we're also going to add it to, we're going to add it to unfiled again. Remember, we always add it to unfiled first. Then click on import. Our three references were imported into unfiled. So I can just click on unfiled as I did before and you'll be able to see those references. And as we did with the other references, remember to check the details by clicking on the title. Make any changes that you need to. And when you're finished, click on return to list. And when you're finished, then move them into a group. I'm going to add them to the trial group that I set up earlier on. So once again, you'll see I have no references left in my unfile folder because I have assigned everything to a group. So that's how you get references into your EndNote library. You can do it manually or you can export it from other sources into your EndNote library as we've shown you. So we now move from collect and we go to organize. If you go to organize, you can manage your groups. So you can, in this section here, you can create a new group at the bottom. You can rename, you can delete a group, but you can also share groups with other people. Now these other people have to have their own EndNote account. And to share it, you just click on manage sharing and then click on start sharing this group. So you need to put the email address that the other person has used to register for the EndNote account. And then you have also, as the person who is sharing, the right to say how much access they have to the group. If you give them a read-only access, they'll just be able to view the references in your EndNote library. But if you want them also to be able to add references to your EndNote live, the library, give them a read and write access. Others groups, those would be groups that other people have shared with you. Find duplicate allows you to find multiple uh, duplicates of references you've brought into your EndNote library. So if I click on that, you'll see that some of the references in the center there are ticked and those are references I've brought in more than once. So I have the option then of clicking on the delete button to get rid of your duplicates. And I strongly recommend before you do any writing uh, using the EndNote toolbar in Word, which we'll come to in a few minutes, to remove all duplicates before you do that to prevent confusion. If we go next to format. So the first option in format is bibliography and it allows you to quickly create a list of references within EndNote. So the first thing you do is select your references. So you can select an individual group or you could select everything in your EndNote library. So I'm going to select trial. I'm going to select my bibliographic style. So make sure you know what style you're expected to use, whether uh, your school is a style or the journal that you're writing for as a style, make sure you know that. So I'm going to go for Harvard. So if it's another really long list. So if you click H in your keyboard, they bring it down to the start of the H's and then scroll down and you'll see Harvard UCD. So I'm going to select that and then file format. Just pick which text file as your file format. And if I want to see what that looks like, I can save it and open it up as a text file. I can email it or I can preview and print to see what that looks like. And you'll see it opening on the screen and there is 
all my references that are in my trial folder with the right referencing style applied. So it's that easy to create a list of references. The other important thing you need to know about in the format section is the site while you write plugin. This you'll have to install on your own computer to allow your copy of Word to talk to your EndNote library. If I click in there, you'll see that there's an option for Windows and, uh, and an option for Mac. So make sure you pick the right op uh, operating system to install it on. We've also been told to tell you that if you are a Mac user, before you install this, make sure that your operating system is completely up to date and make sure that your version of Word is completely up to date as well. And whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user, do not have Word open when you're installing this. So if you haven't installed the site while you're right plugin, I suggest you pause this video and install it and come back and we will go into how you can use the EndNote toolbar to insert references into your Word document. So I'm going now to Word and you'll see on my version of Word, I have an EndNote toolbar. And before we get into putting references in, it's a good idea to go to the preferences section or the preferences option in the EndNote toolbar and then go to application. And you'll see that you have the option of putting your email address and password for your EndNote account. I would recommend you do that. And then every time you open the EndNote toolbar, you're going to be automatically logged into your EndNote account. So it'll save you time. So we're going to put a few paragraphs of text on the screen to, to simulate an assignment or, or something that you're writing. And to do that, we just need to type these characters in. So if you type in, I'm just going to make it larger on the screen here so we can all see it easily. Just type equal R-A-N-D, open brackets, close brackets, and then just press enter or return. I'll make it big again. So equal R-A-N-D, open brackets, close brackets. And you'll also see this on your worksheet as well. And when you're done, just click on the, the enter button and hey presto, you have a few paragraphs of text on the screen. And I'm just gonna make this slightly bigger on the screen here. So we can all see what's happening very easily. So here is my text and I'm back again in my EndNote toolbar. So the first thing I do is I place my cursor in the text where I want to put it in a citation. I click on the insert citation icon in the EndNote toolbar and I put in a search term. Now we did some references for James Joyce, so I'm going to search for James Joyce. And you'll see I've got multiple references for James Joyce. And I can select my references. Uh, and I can hold down my control button if I'm a window user. And I can uh, put in multiple references at the same time. If you're a Mac user, I believe it's the command button that you use. And then just click in search where you had your cursor you'll see your reference or your citations being entered. And if you scroll down, there you're gonna see your, um, your reference list being created as well. So it's that easy to get your citations and your references into a Word document. If you decide that you have put the wrong reference in and you wanna change it, don't just use the don't just highlight what you put in and delete it. You need to use the EndNote toolbar to get rid of it. So to do that, just click on the, the citation you want to work with. Now we only have one here, but you could have multiple citations on the same page and even more across an entire document. So make sure you select the specific citation you want to work with. And you'll notice when you click on it, it sort of highlights itself in gray. 
And this is telling the EndNote toolbar that is this specific citation you're working with. Then go back up to your EndNote toolbar, go to Edit Citations, select the reference you want to get rid of, and then on the far right, you see it says edit reference and there's a little triangle beside edit reference. So click on the triangle and then click on remove citation. Then just click OK. And there we go. The other citation has disappeared. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that it's disappeared from the references as well. And this is because that was the only time it was in the document. If it was multiple times in the document, it would still remain there. You also have the possibility of adding a reference or a citation where there is already an existing citation. And once again, you do that by clicking on the citation, going up to Edit Citations, and then going to the drop down menu clicking on insert citation. You can do another search. So we found uh, material on the web, web of science. I'm going to search for that. And there is all my references. So I can pick my reference, click insert and click OK. Other things you can do in the EndNote uh, edit citations is you can exclude the author, exclude the year. And what this means is that it takes it out from the brackets of your citation. So in some citation styles, such as the Harvard style, if you say Smith says, you don't need to give Smith in the citation brackets because you said who the author is. Or if you said in 2011, it was proven, you could leave the year out. So you can see that it works. So I've highlighted the O'Connor reference. I'm going to exclude the author, exclude OK. And there you see all that's left is the year. And one final thing is page numbers. If you give a quotation or you refer to a specific part of a article or a book, you need to say what page numbers you're getting that information from. There are three boxes underneath the exclude author, exclude year, the bottom half of, the, of this window, and they say prefix, suffix, and pages. Ignore pages. It's the, it's the most logical place to put the, uh, the page numbers, but it only works with certain referencing styles. So leave that blank and go up to suffix and put in, literally by typing in, the information that you that you require to put in for your referencing style. So, for example, if I put a comma, a space, lowercase p, and a full stop, and a page number, or two lowercase p's and a full stop, and a page number, hyphen, the other page number. If it's multiple pages, you can do that as well. So, click OK, and there is the page number there. We talked about using the correct referencing style, and you'll see there is a drop-down menu for a style here. You'll have a limited number of referencing styles limited, uh, listed here at the very start. If the style that you want to use is not listed there, go to the very first option that says select another style, click on that. And there we have all the styles. So if you go to H, We'll bring on to H's and then work our way down to Harvard UCD or whatever references style that you want and everything will change on the screen. So you can, if you're, you can always change it any time to an alternative referencing style if you require to. If you're using EndNote Online uh, to help you write a dissertation or a thesis, you might end up in a situation where you have multiple chapters, each with their own EndNote bibliography. But of course, when you're going to submit a bibliography or a thesis uh, for marking, you need to bring everything together into one master document, which means you'll require a master bibliography as well. 
and EndNote can help you do that. And you can do that by going up to Convert Citations and Bibliography and click on Convert to Unformatted Citations. So if you look at the very bottom, you'll notice that your references have disappeared and where your citations were, there's more information and there's more curly brackets as opposed to the round brackets. EndNote calls these placeholders and there's enough information there for EndNote to be able to find these references in your EndNote library. So you'll do this for all the chapters in your dissertation. And then you just copy. So if I do Command A, which will select everything, Command C to copy. And obviously if it's a Mac, it's going to be uh, Command A and Command C. And then you can just paste those into a new document in the right order. And then you can get back all your references and your citations by clicking on the update citations and bibliography button. And there we go. Everything is back again and our, cit our citations and our references are back in place. And the last thing to tell you is what's called convert to plain text. Convert to plain text is normally used when authors are submitting an article to a publisher and they've used EndNote. Uh, EndNote places a load of coding behind the scenes, but the publishers ask that the coding be removed from the Word document. Uh, they say it interferes with their desktop publishing packages. And to do that, you just click on convert to plain text be very careful when you're doing this. If you haven't already saved your document, there is the possibility that you will end up with no version of your document with the EndNote coding. Ideally, when this is done properly, you will have a version, your original version with the EndNote coding and a plain text version. And the plain text version is what you're going to send off to the publisher. So when I click on convert to plain text, I am being told that the document has not yet been saved it's suggesting that I do save the document and then ask me would I like to save the document or continue without saving. So I'm going to say yes, I want to uh, save the document. Uh, I'm going to save it to my documents and I'm going to call it trial just to be consistent. Click on save. And my version of EndNote of my document with the EndNote coding is safe, it's saved, and this is a plain text version. So remember your citations were highlighting themselves in gray and your bibliography does the same because this is the plain text version, none of that happens. So this is the version that you would send off to the, your publisher or the journal, and but you will still have your EndNote version for when they come back with amendments and corrections. And that's really the basics of using EndNote. So we've talked about how to create your account, how to get into your account in Web of Science, how to add references manually, how to bring references in from databases, and also how to use EndNote and Microsoft Word together. The last thing I just want to remind you is where you can find the help on the library website. Here's the library homepage. In fact, any page will allow you to get to it. What you're looking for up here at the top is guides and help. Then go to I am a student. Go to study skills and then select EndNote. My contact details are on the front there. So my name is Dermot, so do, just do feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions. We also have in further help and support. We have some manuals on, on the basics of EndNote, so you can EndNote X9 getting started, there's more advanced in, in next steps. And here, of course, underneath that is where you could find the information for EndNote training. Thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you've managed to get some information uh, and hopefully you will be following um, up with the uh, and using EndNote regularly. Um, if you have any questions, we have regular 
uh, workshops uh, where you would have found out about this in our training. So come and talk to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much. And thanks a lot. <laughs>